In this video, we're going to talk about Type C tax-free reorganizations. So in a Type C tax-free reorganization, you basically have the purchasing corporation. In this case, let's say it's Jalapeno Pancakes, a restaurant chain. They are going to transfer voting stock and possibly some boot. Now, how much boot? Well, it has to be at least 80% of the consideration being voting stock. So the other 20% could be cash or something like that. However, there's an exception. If they're assuming any liabilities, so let's say Jalapeno Pancakes is assuming liabilities from the Target Corporation, then in that case, the amount of consideration that can be boot, that 20%, is reduced dollar for dollar for each liability that they assume. And actually, if they're assuming so many liabilities from the Target that the amount of liabilities actually exceeds 20% of the consideration, the total consideration being given, then basically jalapeno pancakes has no choice but to give voting stock. But generally speaking, we don't have that liability situation. They can do 80% voting stock and up to 20% cash property, something else. So they're going to transfer this to the target. In this case, the target is liquid sugar syrup. So they're going to transfer the voting stock and some boo, or it could be 100% voting stock, to the target corporation. And what the target corporation is going to give back they're going to give, they're, they're going to send to Jalapeno Pancakes substantially all of their assets. Substantially all. So that's going to be, we're going to define what substantially all means in a moment. Basically, pretty much all of the assets need to go from liquid sig uh, sugar syrup to Jalapeno Pancakes, which can be a little bit of an issue because since Jalapeno Pancakes has to acquire substantially all of the assets of the target, that means if there's any unwanted assets that liquid sugar syrup has, then they can't go and sell them like a month or so before the acquisition uh, to try and get rid of them because the IRS might collapse the whole deal into one single transaction. And, and so they basically you have to acquire almost all the assets. And then what's going to happen is that after all these assets of the target have gone to the purchaser and then the target has received voting stock and or maybe some boots, some cash or something, the the target needs to liquidate right so the target needs to liquidate it's not the same as dissolving it's not necessarily that you you know get rid of complete the corporation but usually that's what happens but by liquidating i said they target is going to distribute everything that they've received from the purchaser right so whether it be voting stock the 80 percent or 100 percent or 20 percent or whatever else they receive they're going to distribute that to their shareholder. Let's say that they have one shareholder named Susie. So Susie is going to receive all that voting stock and whatever else, cash or anything, it's gonna be given to the target and then the target's going to give it to Susie. They're gonna distribute everything to Susie, right? So Susie is not going to recognize any gain Right. This is this is actually this is going to be tax free to Susie. It's a tax free reorganization because Susie is technically not getting the voting stock and other property from jalapeno pancakes. It's, it's being given to Susie from liquid sugar syrup. Right. And liquid sugar syrup isn't going to recognize any gain either. They're not going to have any gain unless, of course, in the, the kind of situation where, remember, we said there's substantially all the assets that they're being transferred to jalapeno pancakes. Well, there might be some assets that they don't transfer and those few assets that they don't transfer when they're forced to liquidate and give everything to Susie. Those assets that they hadn't transferred to the purchaser uh, might might actually recognize a gain in any case. Susie's basis, Susie's basis, Susie's going to take a substituted basis in the new shares, right? So when she's getting, because she's getting rid of her liquid sugar syrup, when, when this company, you know, basically distributes, every, they uh, liquidate and they give everything everything to Susie, Susie's going to have these new shares, right? This, this voting stock of jalapeno pancakes, and it's going to be a substituted basis. Whatever her basis were in her old shares, that's going to be her basis in the new shares. So now I want to talk about some of the rules and say, what do we mean by substantially all and, and, and so forth? So you can understand a little bit the intricacies of a uh, type B reorganization. So when we say substantially all of the target's assets, what we mean is seven, at least 70% of the fair market value of the gross assets of the target. So whatever liquid sugar syrups gross assets were, multiply that by 70%. And jalapeno pancakes has to acquire at least that uh, percentage of the assets and at least 90% of the fair market value of the net assets, right? So that's what we mean by substantially all 
If they don't require acquire substantially all the assets, then it's not going to be qualified as a Type C tax-free reorganization. Now, one advantage to a Type C is that Jalapeno Pancakes does not have to acquire all of the target's liabilities or, or really any. They just acquire the liabilities that are specified in the agreement. So any kind of contingent liabilities, let's say that liquid sugar syrup uh, might have some lawsuit that's going to happen in a few years and nobody knows about yet, or there's, they did some environmental damage or something like that. Nobody knows about it yet. Jalapeno pancakes is not going to get stuck with that, which is really nice because in a way, this is kind of like a merger. And some people call it a practical merger because it's, all the assets pretty much are going from the target uh, to the purchaser. And then the target is is liquidating and giving everything to the shareholder. So, you know, in a, and then usually they end up dissolving the corporation. So you end up with one corporation. So basically you call it a practical merger. Yet, yet uh, Jalapeno Pancakes is not going to get stuck with any liabilities other than those that they sign up for. Now, at least 80% of the consideration being given, and we've already talked about that, that's what the purchaser is giving to the target to make the deal happen. At least 80% of that has to be voting stock of jalapeno pancakes. And again, it, that will, it, it'll actually be higher than 80% if the target is giving liabilities to jalapeno pancakes. If jalapeno pancakes is assuming some of the target's liabilities, that's going to reduce uh, this 20% that could be boot. That 20% of boot potential is going to go down and down and down, eventually to zero. And if they're just giving so many liabilities, it's actually more than 20% of the consideration, then it has to be completely voting stock that jalapeno pancakes is giving to the target. And then afterwards, as we mentioned, the target is going to need to liquidate. Is basically distributing everything to Susie, the shareholder, and there's not going to be any gain recognized except the, the exception I talked about. Another nice thing is that shareholders do not need to approve this, and it's not like a Type A where you remember we talked about Type A reorganization with mergers and consolidations, and it, we said, oh, one of the disadvantages of Type A is you had to follow the state merger laws. Well, the nice thing about Type C is that it's a practical merger, people call it, but it's not an actual merger. You don't have to follow state merger laws, although you might be forced to comply with some kind of non-merger state laws. So that's an advantage to Type C relative to Type A.